Madam Speaker, I beg to move that a bill entitled An Act to Provide for the Regulation and Control of Gaming and Betting and Matters Related Thereto be forthwith read a third time and passed. All right, welcome back to the Now Morning Show here on CTT. I am Natalie Lagor. And we're going to be talking about the gambling, gaming and betting control bill that was passed in the up house, I think, on Monday and in the lower house yesterday. And just to get the barkeepers and operators associations perspective on the bill. So here to speak with us about that is the president of the barkeepers and operators association, Satish Munisar. Good morning to you, Mr. Munisar. Good morning, Hathri, and good morning, Aranto. All right. What, what what are your impressions on the bill that was passed? Well, basically, the bill is a uh, implementation of regulation the gambling betting sector in Toronto. Um, this is being in the form of the of commission that will be set up to govern the, the affairs of the, the gambling betting sector. Um, the bill affects the entire sector, from us to private members. Um, man, there is important of the device and even now uh, as in stated in the bill, there are different types of licenses that we now have to apply. Um, and the things that uh, is concerning that I'm not aware of the, the procedures to acquire these licenses and these may be attached to these licenses. Um, even pertaining to the bar itself, we have this we will have will be able to have a music machine up to the minimum of 20 machines and this govern on the the liquor like that but if when it comes to pertaining this bill we would need to apply for a separate license name and mean lounge license um so that that that's the way that it affects all because what so, concern so, that so so you're telling me that bars <clears throat> i know so you're regulated under the liquor license act so you're telling me you'll have to apply for a different license for the amusement machines that you use? Yes, yeah, but in the act, we would have to, although we are governed by liquor license, in order to offer the money, we would have to apply for a lounge land on the Yagan Beta. So Right, but that's because that's because they have, you know, they want a commission that can regulate everything. So what exactly is the issue? Uh, but one thing that I have is that uh, we are aware of what is the procedures and the to that are attached to the licenses. Um, now the the keepers and operators association doesn't have any issue with it. We understand that the gambling and betting sector has been regulated for years, and we agree that it needs to be regulated. Um, it's just it's just some simple concern in terms of what what is the procedure for these licenses. These are the fees are paid. And also one other difference is that on classification of the what is gambling from amusement machine, it has resulted in that ruler machine and multiplayer link gaming device will no longer be allowed in, in our setting. And this huge classification of machines on the present. Now these machines played an integral part of our base for over a year. And on, on the last of this bill, we will no longer be able to to, to run these streets and this is something right we have but the thing is you customers. could you could but you just have to be licensed as a casino because um, the thing is that, that at bars are allowed amusement machines and if you want the ruling machines which is something that's normally used in casino then you just have to change your status um the, the, that is true but uh, there are a lot of being that are new there's a different license and population in the bar, bar sector owners are, are unclear how you go out applying these licenses. So the right, but I'm, is they will propose the, the, that the, thing, the casino license be already read some of the bar owners or majority bar owners. So as I say, not any major concern in terms of acquiring the license, but we just want we, we just have a, a, a clarification on what process now to apply for these licenses and, and possibly what is the fees after these licenses. Right, but it, I think the fees, the penalties are included in the bill. So maybe you'll just have to take a look at that. But in terms of the commission and, and um, you know, the way you go about being licensed, I think when that commission comes in place, then they'll have the rules about how you're to be licensed. So I think it's just a matter of giving it some time. 
Yes, because we agree from the perspective of Archivist and Operators Association, we understand. Now, um, as seen in, on social media, there has been a lot of hype or, or innovation in certain the bars and these days. So this, this innovation was out by things. Oh, but come on, Mr. Monistar, social media, you going, you go in, you come in to tell me something about what you say on social media. How is that even what relevant to the conversation? The Sorry? This is basically a very hype and concern with the banners, but most of the information I spent was misinformation. Uh, persons probably take time to debate and understand the bill probably. Because of this misinformation, has all the banners concerned that. And, uh, yeah, but as the president, as the president of the Barkeepers and Operators Association, isn't it your responsibility to tell them what is in the bill as compared to what's in social media so that people don't be panicking for no reason. I mean, we yeah. understand that one, the sector is going to be regulated. Two, there's going to be a commission established to deal with the licensing, to deal with the penalties, to deal with how people are supposed to operate. You know, three, that there will be penalties or something. Four, that the, amuse the bars are allowed amusement machines, which are regulated under the Liquor License Act. And if you want roulette machines and other machines, then you have to be registered as a casino. We have established these at least, you know, simple things. So if people are on social media, you know, buzzing and making a, a, a hoorah about nothing, isn't it your responsibility as somebody who is supposed to pay attention to what's in the bill, know what's in the bill and say, well, listen, there isn't anything to panic about. Um, yeah, you, you are quite correct, Natalie, and this is what I'm um, from the barkeepers and writers. So, this is we have been doing from position and the, the position of the executive. Um, I would like to make mention the um, uh, association which is called the Commission of Bar Restaurants, and uh, they have taken uh, an approach of in the government on, on this Mr. Mr. Moody, sir, I have. I have to tell you that your connection is really bad. I, I hear some of the words. I'm trying my very best to understand what you're saying. You are speaking about another association, another bar association? Yes, um, at present, there's a, 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 a other association that has stopped. Um, they have taken a, a stance of, of a particular position okay. with um, um, of the member of that association was um, in the Senate as a opposition senator and the debate bill. And um, this is where some of the misinformation has been coming from. So, what they have been doing from our perspective, from the people's and opposition association, as you clearly stated, I think to reach out to all the, the front bar owners, for them of the, the right information, and um, basically. You can't be on 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 the list. How is no need to panic, but we all we need is some clarity on how we open the license. All right, it, Mr. Munisar, do stay with us. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll continue the continue the conversation after. Okay.